Thank you. Glory be to God. I have a very, uh, I'm going to take forward from where I stopped yesterday about arranging the heavens and look at another dimension of it today. So we travel to Isaiah 64 verse 1 as the first reading which you know, so I may not bother reading it again. Isaiah 64 verse 1, but if it's projected, I could quickly read it. Isaiah 64 verse 1. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains may flow down at your presence. Amen. May you continually dwell under an open heaven. Then there is a man in the New Testament who prayed this kind of prayer that he wanted a bit more from God. In Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, we want to look at Apostle Paul. He said, I wanted a bit more. I'm tired of the little. I want to go a bit further in God. I just want a bit more in God. Philippians in chapter 3. We want to look at the word of the living God. Paul began to give us his credentials. From verse 3. He says, we are the circumcision that worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. We have no confidence in the flesh. He says, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he had whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I the more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law a Pharisee. In other words, I'm a blue blood. I'm not an ordinary citizen. I have it all. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. In other words, if you are to look at the law and myself, I was blameless. But then, verse 7, say, but what things were gained to me? Those I counted laws for Christ. My brother, my sister, may you find Christ. Say, ye doubtless and I count all things but laws for the excellency, look at that statement, of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the laws of all things, and do count them be dung, that I may win Christ. One more prayer in the name of Jesus, each of us, may we win Christ. Yeah. If you look at this scripture very carefully, you might think, is the man confused? I thought you are born again. I thought in Acts chapter 9 you had an encounter with the Lord. Why are you praying that you want to lose things for Christ? You want to win Christ? But then if he prayed it, maybe you and I should also pray. In the name of Jesus, may we all here win Christ in Jesus' name. Say, so be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. Somebody shout, I follow after. That if that I may apprehend that for which I must apprehend of Christ Jesus, brethren. I can't know myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. My focus this morning is verse 10. When you say, Lord, rend the heavens, you are saying, Lord, I want to know who you are. And Paul began to pray in verse 10, say, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, be made conformable unto his death. Brethren, there are several prayers in the Bible. And I like biblical prayers more sometimes than the reciter ones. Because biblical ones tend to just deal with issues that I desire. One of them was what we prayed yesterday. The Lord rent the heavens. It was a prayer of a man. Today, even as we pursue God a little bit more, pursue his holiness, we want to look at another prayer in the Bible. That is the prayer of Apostle Paul, who in pursuit of God and his holiness and righteousness just wanted a bit more from God. This is a man that said, Lord, that I may know you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this was a man in Acts chapter 9 who had taken permission from the, from the high priest and the Sanhedrin to go and persecute and kill Christians. While he was going, he had an encounter with the Lord. A light shone from heaven. He fell down from his horse and he heard the voice of the Lord for the first time in his life. And he said, Lord, what will you have me do? And the Lord told him, go and stay in the city. After three days, we shall tell you what to do. We'll send a man unto you. Ladies and gentlemen, a man that had God, that had the encounter with God in First Corinthians chapter 11. He told us that I was not there when they had communion, but they revealed it to me. Yet, he was praying, I want to know you more. I don't know what your desire is, sir. I don't know how far you have gone with God. But there are dimensions in God that unless he reveals to you and I, we may never know. And that's why we're going to cry to him this morning, Lord, I want to know you. If you have a topic at all, it's I too want to know God. He said, I don't want to be a listener, sharing people's testimony. No, I want my own personal experience. Paul says, I have known Christ, but I want more. Somebody shout, I want more. Only those who believe shout, I want more. That's how we sing that song. I want more of you. I want more of you. I lay down my life to make room for you. I want more of you. What a song. Paul is saying, I've known Christ, but I want more. He's saying to us, I want a deeper yet relationship with Christ. Paul is almost praying the kind of prayer that I want experience like Enoch had. That Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. I want something deeper. Paul was saying in John 14, 21, I want you to reveal more of yourself to me. My brother, my sister, in this season that you are in, may God reveal more of himself to you. Paul was saying, what is his prayer? He says, I want more experiences. I want more personal experiences with you. They have shared testimony on the altar. It is beautiful. Pastor has shared of his, of his victories. He's okay. My deacon has shared. But I too, I want more. I want to know you. Listen, what you know, nobody can take from you. I don't want to know by the hearing of the air. I want an encounter with you. When you know God, sir, when you know him the way you ought to know him, even if it appears your miracles are delayed, you are secured. Why? He has spoken to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that the sound of my voice. May you know the Lord a little bit more. May God reveal himself to us more. May we walk deeper with God. May we go closer to him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, Paul is saying in his prayer, I want to be holy and complete in you. That was his prayer. How do I know that? First John chapter 2. Look at the word of the Lord. Verse 3 to 4. You see, when you know God a bit more, it becomes a lot easier to be holy. First John chapter 2, 3 to 4. Look at what the Bible says. He said, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. The power to keep the commandments of God. May you acquire today. May you have today in the name of Jesus. Paul says, John says, hereby we do know that we know him when we keep his commandments. Maybe I wasn't there, but please follow me. Maybe Paul was praying, Lord, there are some commandments I'm not able to keep. If I know you, I'll be able to keep them. I don't appear before me religious. There are some you are not keeping too. All of us are. So maybe we should pray like Paul and say, Father, come on, say, Father, I want to know you more. Because the Bible says, we do know that we know him if, if, conditional, we keep his commandments. Now look at the next one, verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Ask your neighbor, I hope you are not a liar. That's why we're going to pray, sir. Because all of us need help. That's what Paul was saying. Paul says, there are some commandments I've not been able to keep. I don't want to appear as a liar before people. Even though you are performing miracles through me. Sick have been healed. Dead have resurrected. I've won countless of souls. But there are some things I am dealing with. I want to know you more. Brethren, 
Why is it good to know him? Why? Well, what is Paul saying? Again, let's go to the word of the Lord. Job chapter 22, verse 21. Job 22, verse 21 to 29. Job was saying, Acquaint now yourself with him and be at peace. In other words, the more you know God, the more you are a carrier of peace. Thereby, look at the next amen, good shall come unto you. When you know God, what comes to you? Good. Evil shall be far from you. You see, there are some prayers we pray that are not necessary on time. If we pray, that's, I call them, I've called them here before, I call them all syllabus prayers. Do the proper one. Acquaint now yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby, what will come to you? Good. In the name of the Lord, this season, you will know God. I say you will know God. I say you will know God. I say you will know God. What is Paul saying to us? Paul is saying, let me ask you a question. How many of us know, I'm sure you know the answer already. How many of us know our president, Donald Trump? How many of us know him? You don't. I mean, nobody, nobody knows him. Wow. Okay, you know him. Fantastic, fantastic. How many of us know about him? Almost all of us. So how many of us really know him? If you know him, please stand up. I really, it's critical for my preaching. You know, Mr. President, Donald Trump, would you rise on your feet, please? You, please come forward, since you know him. Because there, there's, no, there's a greet for you. You that know Mr. President, please come, sir. You know him. Let's clap for the man that knows Mr. President. I need you, I need you to preach. Please, come, 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 come. God bless you. I don't know him, but you know him, so... Come on, clap for the man of God. Very important. Please, sir. You're welcome, sir. Since you know Mr. President, would you tell us what his best food is? Um, it's sandwich. Sandwich. People don't, they don't seem to agree with you. They do. They, do. they don't know him. They don't know him. They don't know him. <laughs> Are you using formula for me or you're serious? No. Sandwich. Sandwich, okay. Since you know him, what kind of sandwich? Um, roast beef. He's joking. He's right. Okay. Since you know him, how does he like to sleep at night? Uh, no. <laughs> you don't. Uh, on a business level. On a business level. Okay, you know him on a business level. Fantastic. Now, that's what I wanted. He knows him on a business level. There are people that will know him also as president. There are people that will know him as world leader. There are people that will know him as their husband. I'm sure the knowledge of the wife is superior to what you know. Would that be right? Yes. Very good. Now, thank you, sir, for knowing him. Please introduce us. Eh? <laughs> Glory be to God. Now, the same thing with God. Job says, acquaint yourself now with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Don't let's know him from afar. Let's know him deeper than business level. Let's know God on an intimate level. That is the desire of Apostle Paul. I want to know you intimately. This year, beloved, you will know God intimately. Look at the next statement. Please follow me. Job 22 verse 22. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. Enough of people telling you about God. This is the problem we have now. Nobody knows God again. People are waiting for interpretation. That's why somebody, a prophet will tell you, if you saw my soul ten times, then something will happen. Put his foot on your tummy because he's casting out devil. Where is it written in the Bible? Why? Because we have refused to receive the law from his mouth. He says, lay up his words where? In your heart. He says, if thou return to the almighty, thou shall be built up. Verse 23, thou shall put away iniquity far from your tabernacles. Then look at the next man. We don't need to pray for money. He said, then shall thou lay up gold as dust. And gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. 
Look at him praying for defense. It's not necessary when you know him. Look at him and yea, the Almighty shall be your defense. And thou shalt have plenty of silver. Somebody shall, Lord, let me know you. When they came to arrest Elisha, and Gazi was all troubled, worried. The man of God said, what's your problem? He seems you don't know the God we serve. For they that are with us are more than those that are against us. I'm going to lead in some prayer in about 15 minutes. And I believe this prayer will turn around each of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Bible says, yea, the Almighty shall be your defense. Verse 26 says, for then you shall have your delight in the Almighty. And shall lift up your face unto God. Thou shalt make your prayer unto him. Look at the next thing. Struggle in prayer will come to an end. Thou shalt make your prayer unto him and he shall hear thee. Why? Because we know him. So maybe Paul will say, some of my prayers have not been answered. Lord, if I know you more, I will get better results in the place of prayer. He says, you shall pay your vows. Look at verse 28. We love to quote it in scriptures. But it started with, I must know him. See, then thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon your ways. We do project verse 29. Look at what happens. Let's read together. One, two, go. All from knowing him. I believe God this morning, each of us, we have a deeper revelation of God. Please, I'm almost there. What you do not know can never benefit you. No matter how much is available everywhere, what you don't know can never, ever benefit you. It can't. Who you do not know cannot be a blessing to you. That's why I'm praying this morning. May all of us know God. Amen. Some of the prayers I'm going to lead us in praying that may each of us know God as a great God. Amen. When you know him as a great God, suddenly you see him doing great things in your life. Because he's the one you know that works for you. Deuteronomy chapter 10, 16 and 17 says, For the Lord your God 16 and 17 says, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart. Be no more stiff necked. For the Lord your God is God of gods, the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and terrible, which you gather no persons, no ticket reward. He's a great God. And that God will do great things for you. Amen. Psalm 14, verse 1 says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. The God that is a great God will do great things for you. Amen. Let me know God. What is Paul saying again? He says, I want to know his name. How many of us know the name of God in this place? You know, the only, is the name that you know that work for you. I'm telling you. Psalm 105 verse 1. Look at the prayer. He says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. <laughs> Make known his deeds among the people. Ladies and gentlemen, as you get ready to pray, you will know the name of the Lord. You will know the name of the Lord. Because it's the name you know that works for you. Exodus chapter 6 verse 3. Look at how God explained it himself. Exodus chapter 6 verse 3. The Lord says, And I appeared unto Abraham, and unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But look at the name. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Which means you and I can know God. But there's always a dimension you don't know. The dimension you don't know this morning, may God reveal to you. Yeah. There's no way you will appropriate anything you don't have a revelation of. So we're going to pray with the names of God this morning. Somebody's going to know God as the promoter of men. Oh, let your amen be born again, sir. Yeah. Why? Psalm 75, verse 5 to 7. He said, don't be proud. Don't lift up your neck on high. For, for permission, come another from the east, not from the west, not from the south. But God, the judge of all, he will lift up one and put down another. This season, you will know God as your promoter. Amen. You see, when you know God as your promoter, you don't run after a man. You will know God as your promoter. Amen. Somebody this season, you will know God as your healer. Amen. Oh, say a better amen, sir. Amen. 
you will know God as your healer. You will know God as your healer. In the name of Jesus. Say you will serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. Take sense away from the midst of you. None shall be burning or cast his young. In the name of the Lord, you will know God as your healer. Say for I am the Lord that healed thee. You won't just know him as your healer. Not as your promoter. You will know God as your defense. You will know God as the almighty. You will know God as the lift up of your head. You will know God as the one that goes ahead of you. Ladies and gentlemen, may you know God. The first name I want to present to us that we are going to pray with is the name that is called Elohim. The creator. Elohim means the mighty and strong God. The creator is the first revelation of God in the Bible. I want all of us to know him this morning as a creator. Why is he important? Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Do you need a creative miracle this morning? May you know God as Elohim. May you know him as Elohim in the name of Jesus Christ. Created the heavens and the earth. Another name that we're going to pray with is the name Adonai. Somebody shout Adonai. This is what Paul is saying. Lord, I want to know you as Adonai. I wish I could take time to explain this. When Paul was saying, Lord, I want to know you. You know, Paul, the Bible told us, we are told in history, that he was a very smallish man. That his presence was contemptible. In fact, some people say he even had hunchback. Maybe when he was praying, Lord, I want to know you. I said, Lord, him, Lord take away this hunchback. Take away this pain. And the Lord told him, my grace is sufficient for you. Adonai. Somebody shout Adonai. Come on, shout Adonai. Shout Adonai. May God reveal himself to you as Adonai. Another name of God this morning you want to deal with is the name Yahweh. Somebody shout Yahweh. Or Jehovah. It's the only name that sometimes we translate in English. And the name that was given to Moses, that I am the I am. I am who I am. Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. What does that mean this morning? It means immediate presence of God is accessible. It means God that is available. It means God that you can call on in deliverance and he will answer you. In the name of the Lord, whatever you are going through, may you know I am this morning. Another name is Jehovah Rapha. Exodus 15, 26. The Lord that he let me. I see God healing somebody this morning. Another name that we need to know, this one is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. The Lord that gives us victory. One of the significance of this year, number 17, signifies victory or overcoming the enemy. This year in particular, you will know Jehovah Nisi. Yeah. Exodus 17 told us how the Lord fought the Amalekites and he gave victory to his people. Glory be to God. But another name that is critical for our retreat is Jehovah Mkadesh. The Lord who sanctifies. The Lord who makes holy. God made it clear that he alone can make you and I holy. Exodus 30, forgive me, Ezekiel 37 verse 28. God that makes you holy. I pray for